Hello, everybody. This is my friend Otis. He wants me to read him a bedtime story, even though it's hours before his bedtime. So, how can I say no to a face like that? <laughs> I don't know if you can see him or not. Same. He's knocked my tripod over a few times already. Help it out. All right. The promised land was given to Israel for an everlasting possession. Surely this must mean a longer time than they did in ages past possess it. This promise remains then yet to be fulfilled. Or just maybe just bullshit. Wishful thinking, who knows? It must mean an undisturbed possession of it, so long as a possession of it on earth may be desirable. Or to the end of the world, which might be the same thing, you know. <laughs> end of the world, I don't want it anymore. <laughs> we accordingly find that people at the time of the introduction of the millennium expostulating with God and pleading that ancient grant O Lord why hast thou made us to err from thy ways and hardened our hearts from thy fear return for thy servants sake the tribes of shine inheritance the people of thy holiness have possessed it shine inheritance but a little while kind of a chip our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary it's almost like there isn't a god but that can't be it right We are thine. Thou never bearest rule over them. They are not called by thy name. Here is a plea put into the mouths of the ancient people of the Lord at the time of their restoration. Not long before the battle of the great day. With a description of which battle this chapter begins. They expostulate relative to the sovereignty of God in the resting of the veil of blindness and the hardness so long on their hearts during their long rejected state. They plead that they are God's servants according to the ancient entrail, uh, entail, to the ancient entail of the covenant. They plead for a restoration and plead that their nation had enjoyed that their everlasting inheritance, wait, had enjoyed that their little that their everlasting inheritance but a little while but that a people not called by God's name nor governed by his word have trodden down the sanctuary a description exactly fulfilled by the Turks this fully implies the entering again of the Jews upon their ancient inheritance in the last days I shall now adduce some of the numerous express predictions of this event in the 
prophecy of Ezekiel, the restoration of the Jews and of Israel to their own land, as well as their conversion in the last days, is clearly predicted. We have their long dispersion and their guilty cause of it, but God in the last days works for his own name's sake and recovers them, God says. Is that them dry bones that put themselves back together? <sighs> and I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all the countries and will bring you into your own land. And I guess dead people have to come back because they obviously were gypped out of their promise. So they, you know, technicality. Yeah. So the resurrection comes in, I guess. And I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give unto you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And ye shall be my people. And I will be your God. That's when the unconditional love kicks in after you meet his conditions. <sighs> then shall ye remember your own evil ways and shall lose yourselves. Not for your sakes do I do this, saith the Lord God. Be it known unto you. Thus saith the Lord God, in the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities. I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and the waste shall be builded. And a desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all the heathen that passed by. And they shall say, this land that was so desolate is become like the Garden of Eden. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and inhabited. Then the heathen who are left round about you shall know that I, the Lord, build the ruined places and plant that which is desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. Here is their regeneration. Having a new heart, being cleansed from all sin. And beside this, we find expressly promised their being reinstated in the land of their fathers, which had long laid waste. They rebuild their ancient cities. That this in the last days connected with the introduction of the millennium. <laughs> the connexation of the whole passage and the following chapters fully decide. Both houses 
of the descendants of Abraham, uh, viz. Israel and Judah, are recovered as will be seen. Those predictions cannot be fulfilled merely by the conversion of that people, for over and above their express conversion is uh, conversion, they are established in the land of their fathers. Okay, and I'll start at the page, top of page 32. It's getting better. <laughs> 